Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, tonight I got Joseph Cesar here and we're gonna talk about F3P. time US F3P team member. Um, he also finished fourth place at the 2019 F3P World Championships in Greece and helped us bring home the bronze medal for the team award. Um, so Joe's going to talk a little bit about F3P tonight. We're going to show a couple of different designs and motors and construction methods. So Joe. Well, thanks for having me here AC. Of course. Uh, so as you guys see uh, we have F3P planes uh, today. Um, so this design and this design right here, uh, these are my own designs right here. It's called the Expedition. Uh, you can actually find the plans for this design right here on RC Groups. Uh, I'll have the link in the bio. Yeah, we'll put the link in the bio for you guys. Yep. Um, so the basis behind this design um, uh, is really just like a pattern plane. And for those of you guys who don't know what F3P is, F3P is basically indoor precision robotics, uh, which is just indoor pattern. And the difference between this and pattern uh, is we don't have variables like wind and we have other maneuvers that you don't have like torque rolls. Uh, so the designs on these um, kind of represent a pattern in terms of how they fly. Um, but they fly very slow. These are very light uh, airplanes. And it's honestly amazing yep. when you fly it for the first time. It's kind of cool looking back at, you know, when we were doing the ETOC when we were younger, um, we were happy to get down to like eight ounces, seven ounces for an indoor airplane. And Joe, what is, what is that one way? Uh, this one right here, uh, when it was brand new, uh, came out at 45 grams ready to fly. And that was with a one cell, 150 milliamp hour battery. Cool, cool. And I think um, just this, this is uh, John Derringer's airplane um, that Scott Bronwell built. It's a little bit different construction method. Um, it's a little bit heavier. I, I want to say maybe it's around 50 grams with a, a 1S150 um, ultra micro style battery. All right. So uh, as you guys can tell, as we mentioned previously, this is a foam version and this is a balsa version of the same design. Now, a little bit of a background, as AC was talking about in the ETOC days, uh, I say it was a couple of years ago, but it was really... It's really... Well, it was a long time ago, it's really. eight years ago, almost. At least. Uh, so the construction methods have really changed over time since um, these kind of became more popular, I guess you can say, uh, more sophisticated uh, with better performance. So originally, these were primarily just straight Depron, three millimeter, um, nothing special about them you can build them in probably what a couple hours at, a couple hours at most um you know have a few drinks and it'll be done ready for the competition the next morning uh those were coming out uh now granted equipment's gotten better equipment's gotten lighter uh but back then uh those were coming out at roughly i would say 200 grams uh you know if you had a nice light one um, and then after that, they figured out how to get weight out of them because as airplanes get lighter, they tend to fly better for the most part. Uh, so they started milling the foam. Uh, now that was the next big development in terms of uh, construction. Um, so basically, as you guys can see, uh, we have mylar, um, but the general structure, instead of having the mylar, uh, it was just foam. But it would just be milled out to probably a half a millimeter. Uh, and then, you know, everyone would try to get theirs even wider by milling out every single little spot. Um, so after that, uh, we kind of realized, well, we can get these lighter, but they're really flimsy when they get lighter too, because there's not as much uh, strength in the rigidity of the foam. So what they started doing in around 2011 timeframe is we started adding braces to the wing, we started adding more braces and started reinforcing them so that way they become stronger and stronger while not having much weight gained to it. And the result of it was the airplane's flying significantly better, significantly straighter, uh, and just overall um, just makes life a lot easier in terms of longevity of the aircraft. Uh, 
after that, uh, there was kind of, I call it the um, high development phase. Uh, and that's when Mylar was really brought into the scene. Uh, and that was in 2013-ish timeframe. Uh, instead of milling it out, you know, people would just go where you'd mill it out, put depth, uh, and instead of having the depth on there uh, that was milled out, they would have Mylar. Uh, now, this was a heavier Mylar that we're using at the times because the airplanes were heavier as well. Um, but um, as the airplanes uh, got lighter, um, they started changing more and more. They started taking out more foam here, uh, less structure, uh, which is less weight. So from the span of 2014 to 2017, that's kind of when the development of the airframes and the building constructions kind of took off and then it started to slow down. And since 2017, um, towards the end of 2017 that is, uh, we're now at the point where the airframes are relatively, they're not gonna get much lighter. They can, but they're not gonna, it's not gonna be significant. Uh, to give you guys context, um, the airplanes in 2013 uh, were around 80 grams, and at the time we were running a two cell battery. And if you really dug into it really good, you'd get a carbon fiber uh, 10 inch prop uh, from Glavic. And since then, uh, we got lighter and lighter and lighter. Uh, the counter rotating units were a really big thing um, that really changed into it as well. Um, if anything, these are lighter, believe it or not, than a single prop. Um, these units right here, specifically this one right here, is only 11 grams. And that is with two 17 inch props. So, as you guys can tell, it's gotten quite a bit lighter. <laughs> And, and, and also kind of put it in context, back then we were, I mean, 10 inch props, we're now adding seven inches to the prop um, and still managing to be significantly lighter than we were then. Um, I remember specifically in 2014 um, was my first F3P team trials and I, I built a fancy foam Anubis and I got it right around like 80 grams with a, with a single prop setup and showed up to the team trials and Devin and RJ showed up with these ultra milled airplanes that were like 50 grams. And I was, you know, you're already a year behind at that point. So you show up and they have elevated it to another spot and you're just trying to kind of play catch up at that point. Um, and now luckily, like Joe said, that everything has kind of become a, an even battlefield in terms of the construction methods, how light everything is everybody kind of starts off on the same playing field. Now we can really dig into like airplane design and which design is going to be better, which wing type is going to be better, what's going to roll better, um, what's going to hover more hands-free um, and things like that. All right, so something, uh, since we're talking about construction, uh, now we're going to talk about the equipment on these aircraft. Now, these aircraft right here are using Spectrum 2010 servos. Um, equivalent uh, to that would just be any general two to three gram servo. Uh, there's a few different options out there. Emacs makes a couple. Uh, Donatus Pozzolis from Lithuania. Uh, he has a modified version of a servo uh, that gets better centering. Um, we'll have a link for Donatus' and stuff. Uh, that's where you can get just about everything you need. You can actually buy them ready to fly from him. Uh, not cheap, but very, very top-notch quality. Some of the best you can get in the world. Uh, but you can get everything you need there. Um, the wingspan and size of these, uh, I noticed a couple of people were asking. Uh, these are roughly a, they, they range from 32 to 38 inch wingspan size uh, lengthwise. Uh, this one personally, I believe is closer to 35 to 36 inches. Um, which is a little bit bigger, uh, but at the same time, the facilities that we're flying in for world championships are pretty, pretty big, <laughs> very big, <laughs> Olympic, Olympic stadiums. So, um, you know, size isn't too bad of an issue and they're slow enough uh, and the control surfaces are big enough to where you can fly them inside a 20 foot gym and not really have too many issues uh, for the most part. Um, but yeah, in general, uh, we try to keep the equipment as light as we can. Uh, the receivers that we're running are a quarter to a half a gram. The speed controllers we're using are 0.2 grams. So every single gram on these airplanes counts, especially in the building process, because you know even adding glue to certain spots 
you know, you have, you know, okay, well, here's a quarter of a gram, well, here's a half a gram. And next thing you know, you're playing six grams heavier than you want to be. And that makes a huge difference in performance, especially at this level, because you have to remember that uh, with these airplanes, um, I'd say five grams is the equivalent to probably, how much would you say, 200 grams probably on an airplane? Grams, yeah. yeah, so they, that's a pretty big uh, impact on the performance of it. So guys, we're, we're both going to be trying out for the um, US F3P team this year. Um, the team trials event is going to be May 8th in Plainfield, Indiana at the Sparta Dome. Um, we have a, a nice section of it roped off. It's going to be roped off for the actual team trials. And then there's going to be an open fun fly as well for guys who just want to come and hang out and maybe fly whatever foam they have or ultra micro airplanes that they have um, just hanging around. Um, the Worlds this year is going to be in Romania. Um, it's going to be in middle of November. Um, so we're kind of, it's, it seems like it's a little bit of a rush between the team trials and the world championship, but for the majority of us, we're, by the time we get ready for the team trials, we're also just about on that level for the worlds as well, because it's such a stiff competition. Um, so team USA will have, um, three senior pilots and one junior pilot, hopefully this year. Um, and it'll be a whole lot of fun. I'm going to link, um, where the team trial is going to be and I'll also link some information to the bulletins for the uh, F3P Worlds that are going to be in Romania later this year. Yep, so as you guys heard, uh, we have team trials coming up and I encourage you guys to go if you're able to go, especially if you're in that area. I highly recommend it. Um, it is only a one-day event, but uh, as you guys know, uh, the indoor scene uh, hasn't really been too many events. Actually, there hasn't been any events in the past couple of years. So this is a really good chance to get some of your ultra micros out, just and just have a good time, you know, flying indoors uh, safely, obviously, with the whole uh, pandemic still going on. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, now, I know a couple of you uh, have asked me what the situation is for practice for this. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, we're practicing for this team trials and we're practicing, hopefully, uh, if we make this U.S. team this year, uh, we'll be practicing for the World Championships in November. Uh, now, for practice, uh, getting facilities isn't always easy. Being here in Alabama, you know, it's it. it I now understand how a lot of people around the country feel <laughs> about uh, trying to get a oh, yeah. place to fly that's big uh, that doesn't have air conditioning as well, because um, these are very sensitive to air. So air conditioning is almost a no-go uh, inside a facility. But if you find a facility, uh, definitely recommend trying to fly and practice in it. Build one of these. Uh, but another alternative uh, that I created uh, last year as uh, the indoor season was rolling in, uh, before the pandemic started, um, we made this expedition right here actually on Real Flight. Uh, you can go download it and it has all of the setup details about it uh, and AC's flown it, yep. uh, I've flown it and a lot of other people have flown it and it's probably, you know, for those of you who are kind of on the line of trying it or not but aren't able to fly an airplane, uh, if you follow the recommended settings that I had on the swap pages, then uh, it's a it's a pretty darn accurate representation on how these things fly. And I highly recommend it. It's a great way for practice as well, especially if you're using a VR headset. It's one of the most useful things you can have uh, for practice. So uh, for those of you who are trying to get in, uh, I highly encourage it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just let me know about it and I'll try to answer them for you. All right, so uh, as you guys know, we already talked about these aircraft. Now, uh, I do have a surprise for you guys. Uh, it is a new airplane I'm working on, and I figured I'd show you guys a little sneak peek on what I have going on. So I brought with me uh, the new wing uh, for the airplane I'm currently working on. Uh, this one is all balsa as well. Um, and it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty similar. Uh, I tried some smaller other details on this. Uh, so we're gonna see how it works out. Uh, I'm hoping to have this at uh, team trials with me um, in a couple weeks, a couple months, whenever it is. Uh, and hopefully it, uh, it does really good. Uh, so I'll be keeping people up to date once this one's done. Uh, I'll be posting on RC groups on the build thread uh, that I have for the Balsa aircraft in general. Um, and I'll make sure to have weights, updates, more photos, all that. Um, so I'm really looking forward to having this one done and I'm looking forward uh, 
for you guys being able to see it fly. So guys, thanks for checking out the video. Um, we'll have more information coming soon about more F3P stuff. As Joe said, he's gonna be updating the uh, BALSA thread that he has on RC groups a lot. Um, both of us will be updating our Facebooks as we're getting ready for the team trials that's coming up. Um, I wanna give a big thanks to Joe for coming over tonight and helping us get this video done and out to you guys. Um, and look forward to seeing all you guys at an event here soon. Yeah, thanks for having me here. I'm um, looking forward to doing more stuff with you. Uh, and yeah, we got some exciting stuff planned for the future and you guys are sure in for a treat. Make sure you guys like this video and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one.